Hello everyone, this is Shelly from Koala Mitts and Naps, and meet Engelbert. Yep, this is Engelbert the Elephant. That's the, the name that came to my mind as I was making them. <laughs> so, um, you're going to need your Addy 22, your Addy 46, you're going to need four pipe cleaners. Um, I used Bernat Premium Yarn in Baby Yellow, and you need one ball. Um, I was short... Um, just a tiny little bit of yellow yarn, so I need to get another ball just to finish the tail, but I show you it in a different color. But if you're careful with um, the amount of yarn that you use for for your long tail cast, off, cast offs and uh, just for, for sewing up, you will have enough yarn in one ball to make Engelbert. <laughs> so um, anyways, I... Um, I love him. I think he's just so darn cute. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. I'm just moving around with my camera here so you can see all angles of little Engelbert. And there he is. So again, thank you for joining me in this tutorial. I hope you have fun making them. Um, and yeah, any little person that you get, even big person that you give this to is going to absolutely love it. So thank you for joining me um, in this tutorial. Take care and uh, let's get started. Okay, so we're ready to begin our project. If you've got your um, 46 needle machine set up or your 48 if you're using your central, um, let's begin. And you know, the nice part about this body of the elephant is we do not need to... Um, have waist yarn. So we're going to do a long tail cast on. So you're going to put your tail into the center of your machine. You're going to bring your last white and your first black needle in line with your um, yarn feeder here. Now, if you're new to my channel, um, I take, take, this is what I do. I take a black permanent marker and I mark that red divider that's between my last white, and my first black needle, so I can always see it coming around. Um, okay. And so I'm going to uh, put my my tail into the machine in middle of the machine I'm going to go behind that first black needle in front of the next behind and in front all the way around okay I'm not putting tension on this yarn as I um, move the barrel around it's just slipping through my fingers um, creating its own tension really um, I'm just guiding it and we're going to get around till we get to that last white needle and it should be behind or in front however you're looking at it um, in, in all fairness, the way I say it, this will be, be this will be in front, okay? I always say behind when I put it um, under the little nook there, okay? So now that we've got that in, we're going to set our row counter to zero. And we're going to begin um, knitting. And we are going to knit a total row count of 110 rows, okay? So again, this is Bernat Premium Yarn in baby yellow. And Bernat Premium Yarn is... Um, it's just like it works so well in the machine. I'm just, I, I, I haven't used it a lot to be honest. I, um, I have used it, but not. It's not the one that I go to the most. But it is one that I'm going to start using more often because it works so well in the machine. It just is so smooth. Look, like, like watch what I'm doing. It's just smooth. So, um, so nice in the machine. And I've got my my uh, yarn between my fingers here. Um, but I I do have a tensioner that I got on on. Uh, Amazon as well and uh, I may or may not use that <laughs> but I'm gonna just keep going and when I get to about row 55 or um, 60 somewhere in there um, I'm gonna stop and show you how we take the the looseness off of the project and and create a tension by rolling it up into a donut so if you've never done that before um, come back after you get after your project starts to begin to touch the table um, and then I'll show you what I do with that uh, if you um, are not new to to circular knitting then you know to just keep going ahead until you get to row 110 and uh and i'll see you then all right so when your your project starts to touch the table you're going to pick it up um i let it go a little bit further just so you can see um usually i would have done this is row 60 but i would have done it a little bit sooner but i wanted you to get the best picture you could um but once it starts to hit the table then the more rows that you do it starts to bunch up like this and then it that per, um, makes your tension really loose and you could you drop one of these stitches off these little red teeth and if that comes off the red te teeth then you're going to drop your whole row or as many uh, stitches until you catch it okay so that's why when it starts to touch the table around row 55 or so somewhere in there depending on what your tension is you're going to pick it up and you're going to roll it into a donut okay just like so okay and what that will do is it will keep your tension 
even around the rim of your bit of your needles here as you are knitting okay and so then you'll have you'll have nicer stitches and uh your rows will be nice and even and your tension will be will be perfect and it'll be just so much nicer um if you do it this way okay and you're gonna um prevent the tuck stitches um, from happening as much if, if you do it this way, okay? Um, or you can just add clips if you have clip. If, if you don't have clips, you do it this way. Um, if you would prefer to use clips, you can do weighted clips and, and have those on your project and keep moving them up as, as you go. But for me, this is just always what I do. I, I rarely use clips. Um, I, I rather would roll it like that, okay? So I'm also using my tensioner. I'm gonna just um, tilt my camera here a little bit. Um, this tensioner I got from, I, I ordered off of Amazon. And it fits into the machine and I'm using the second little um, tensioner space there. Okay. And uh, with this Bernat Premium yarn, it's working like a dream. All, all I have to do, like it stays in there and it runs through very nicely. And, and yeah, it's just like guiding it through beautifully. And I'm not even worrying about it. I just keep turning at an even pace and it's just working beautifully. So I love Bernat Premium yarn. I'm just, you know, it's not something that I've yarned that I've used a lot of, but I'm beginning to, I'm starting to get it more often because um, it, the machine just absolutely loves it. So anyways, keep going until you get to row 110 then finish row 110 and then I'll see you back. All right, so I finished my 110 rows. I'm going to cut off a long tail. One that would wrap around your barrel, barrel twice at least, okay? And then we're going to take off that yarn tensioner. We're going to open the feeder. We're going to put it between the last white and the first black, and we're going to do a long tail cast off, okay? So grab your needle. You're going to thread your yarn, making sure this one is behind that or in front of that last white one so we can complete that stitch. We're going to rotate our barrel, and we're going to take off Our stitches okay so I went underneath the stitch pulled it off be careful that you don't pull up too high because then this if this stitch comes off and, and drops then you're gonna drop your whole um, row okay so there we go or part of your row until you catch it of course but um, we're gonna keep going grabbing those stitches on your needle with your thumb and if you go too far you want to just put your finger over top of that that stitch to the left so that um, it doesn't fall off as you pull the yarn through, okay? Eventually you'll get a little more slack on your project and then you can just keep going around just like this. Okay. And I'm going to do that all the way around my barrel until I have my project off the machine. Keeping on, keeping on. There we go. All right, so keep going until you get your last needle released from your machine, and then I'll see you back. I've got my project off the machine. I removed my Addy so you can... Uh... You can see what I'm doing here. Um, pardon my table. <laughs> you know, this table is really old. It's my craft table that I use now, so it gets all marked up. Um, my husband made it when he was in uh, shops, when he was in junior high. <laughs> and uh, I have claimed it for my work table. Okay, it's wobbly and it's, uh, <laughs> but it's the perfect height. It's perfect, but um, it looks a little bit worn and that's because it is. It's my craft table. Okay, so you're going to take your project and you're going to unroll it and then you're going to stretch it widthwise. And then lengthwise, we do this with every project we take off our machine because it just uh, makes a huge difference in, in how your project looks. It lines up your stitches, makes them all soft, um, just evens everything out. And it's just a, a must do. You have to do that step, okay? So now we're going to take the one end and we're going to cinch it closed, okay? So pull on that, on that um, yarn end. Tuck it, tuck it all in so you get a very even, nicely done edge at the top there, okay? And you keep pulling on it. Then I'm gonna cut this off so it's not quite so long to work with. I'm going to uh, then grab my needle. And I found this uh, little gadget um, in a secondhand store. In It was amongst um, some sewing supplies and it's just the best little thing, so I use it all the time. I'm gonna put my yarn 
around that little loop. If you have one of these, great. I don't know where you can get them or if, if just if it's really old or what, but you just pull the yarn through <laughs> and it helps. So you do it how you do it, but I'm going to uh, finish it off that way or get it on there that way. So now I'm going to go around that top row of stitches, just picking up the loop. We're going to go around once here. We're going to tighten it up. Okay, just underneath that first row, just like so. Smooth it out so you can see those stitches better and then you can get under them. Okay, just like that. So quiet in my house, you could hear a pin drop. I'm downstairs. I have no music on, no TV on, no nothing. I'm just knitting. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like so quiet. My husband is upstairs working in his office, but um, I don't hear him. And uh, yeah, I'm just having a great morning of crafting. Okay, so I'm going to now take that needle, po poke it through that center hole, grab it on the other end with my hand so that I don't uh, snag the inside. Then I'm going to pinch the top there, pull that whole thing through. There we go. See, it's coming out that end now. Pull that tight. Take my needle off that strand of yarn and then I'm going to close the other side just the same way making sure that this one is outside because we can cut that off now too but um because we want to uh tighten these two ends up together okay so we're doing this just like we've done a beanie if, if uh if you've made beanies this is essentially the first part of this this um cinching together part okay so go ahead and cinch around that top opening just like we did the other side and when and when I'm done that I'll see you back okay Here we go. Okay. So I got that all cinched up. We're going to take our two ends and we're going to tie them. I'm not going to pull too tight because I don't want to break it, but you would, you want the inside layer to be up close to the top layer. Okay. Just like that. Now, sometimes I'll put my hand in there and I'll pull on it and I'll see if it's not snug. Then I'll, I'll take this through the other end and I'll tie it again. But this is, this is snug. It's um, nice and tight up to the top. So we're good. I'm going to do one more. Then I'm going to cut that off. And then I'm going to let this be my inside. So I'm going to turn it inside out, okay? Then all my stitches and my yarn and everything is on the inside and that's looking beautiful. And there I go, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece of yarn, one that will circle around this plus um, uh, a little bit more and we're going to gather at the top okay so go ahead and, and thread your needle again with another longer piece and we'll we'll continue all right so i've got it sideways here and what we're going to do is if you put it in half that's about half right there okay i don't want my head to be in the middle i want it to go up higher so i'm going to go up maybe let's see one two three four five six seven um maybe seven seven rows seven or eight rows okay and we're going to let's do seven and then we're going to um grab the one bar of that stitch and then miss one and grab the next and go around just like this that's how i'm going to do it now if you miss a couple that's okay because we're um we're just basically what we're, this is going to be is this our drawstring for tightening our row but i find if i just pick up one one um, bar of each stitch then i can keep it even around and i'm not gonna angle my row up as i go it's just a nice guide for me okay so keep going until you get um Get around to the other end, to the other side, and your and your yarn ends meet, and then we'll move on to the next portion part. Now, you generally, like if you've made my my um, sleepy time bear or my chubby bunny or you know any or even my baby bunny, you know that I stuff my project and then I do my I do this part. But for this, I'm going to stuff the head um, because this has to be really firmly stuffed, um, more firmly stuffed than than the other animals that I've done. So um, I found that it's easier to portion off the head here, stuff the head really tight, then tighten this and then fill the body. So that's why I'm doing it this way. Okay. So keep going around until you um, get to the other side and then I'll see you back. Okay. Now, again, it, like I'm picking up one bar from every stitch, but if you were to miss a couple and go over, that's, it's not going to affect your project in any way, shape or form. Okay. So go ahead and um, do that and I'll see you back in a minute. I've made it around and it looks like this, okay? And so we're going to take our fiber fill. I always fluff it out a little bit when I take it out of the bags. It's been all comp compressed together and we're going to just fill that very top part just like that. 
grab some more and fill it. Push it right up to the corner there, to the top. Okay, now I can I can um, start to close it off now. See, I put a little too much in there now. I can start to close it off now and then not tighten it completely and add more when I if I need it, okay? So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take these two ends, I'm gonna tie them and scrunch them, okay? I don't want it tight like that. I just want it so that you see the shape of the head, okay? But not not um, not cinched, okay? But I'm going to, I'll show you one in a, well, hang on. I'll show you one this one. This one's not completed, but it is one that I'm working on as well. Sometimes I have more than one going at the same time, okay? Um, this is my gray one, and so this is, you can see that this is not cinched tight. You want you want to have a, um, a good opening around your neck as well, okay? So I'm going to I'll finish him off too and you'll see you'll have seen him in this video too but I'm, I'm working on them both at the same time actually okay so I know I want more stuffing in there I'm actually gonna go down a little bit um, farther down from the neck actually I've just decided if I go down a little bit lower I think I did that with the gray one now that I'm doing this then I have a better focus on where I'm gonna tie my how tight I'm gonna tie my string okay so a little bit more so yeah, go down a couple inches. As long as you're as you're not filling the whole thing, um, you can you can go down, and then you'll you'll be able to see. Um, yeah, I think that's about right. So now I'm going to tie a knot because it forms the shape of the neck, but it doesn't cinch cinch it in too much. Because elephants are are bulky, you don't want a skinny neck on an elephant, okay? But you want it defined. So let's pull that through. This is where I wish I had an extra set of hands. Okay, pull that through, and then from that point, I'm gonna now stuff that head good and proper, okay? You want it nice and tight. So now that we determined how wide we want our, our neck to be, we're going to continue, and we can um, take another drawstring later and tighten that if we need to, but we're going to continue stuffing. But I want that head to be firm. So I'm gonna poke that up into there, just like that, okay? So this is gonna have to be a little bit tighter. So I'll do that afterwards, but at least I know where my head is and where it's gonna be, okay? And now I'm going to go ahead and do likewise with the body. I'm gonna stuff it really full, okay? So you go ahead and do that and then I'll see you back when you've got that done and we'll close up the bottom. All right, so I have the, the body part stuffed pretty, pretty good. Um, just enough room so I can get around with my needle. So I'm going to thread, thread your needle with another, um, long tail and we're going to pick up two, miss two. Pick up two all along the rim, okay? Because we're going to drawstring this tight, tightly closed as well, okay? So miss two, pick up two, miss two, pick up two, just like that. Or miss three, pick up three, however you wanna do it. <laughs> Again, there's no right or wrong. And if you if you just pick, miss one and pick up one, then you know that's okay too. Um, but you just don't wanna leave too big of a gap but you wanna go around just the rim. Once this is all folded nice and smooth, you're, you're going along the, the very bottom rim, okay? Just like so. Until you get all the way around. And when you do so, I'll meet you back. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to cinch this closed, but before I tighten it, I'm going to feel and see if I feel that's firm enough. And you know, this is nice and full and squishy, but it's not firm enough for, for what I want it to be. So I'm gonna add some more. We gotta make our elephant look chunky. <laughs> I'm gonna add some more. And it does use quite a bit of fiber fill, not gonna lie, um, but that's okay, all right? Sometimes that's what you need to do. So I'm gonna put that in there and I'm gonna tighten this tight. And I'm going to tie it off and when I get it knotted then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go around and reinforce it okay and then tighten it closed just like I do the top of a beanie so okay um first I'll put my initial tie in there just like so now I'm going to put this on my needle and I'm going to go around and keep going till I can get it nice and tightly closed okay so you go ahead and do that and then I shall meet you back Okay, so once you have that tightened, I just uh, clipped these off so that they're um, 
a little bit shorter, then I'm going to put my needle into that bottom hole and out the one side, pull it, cut off this yarn, and that part's done, okay? So there we go, we've got the body and the head. This looks a little lumpy there at the top, but it's okay, we're gonna fix that in a minute when we, um, when we uh, shape the head, okay? So now we've got all that, and I actually like how the neck is, I'm not going to tighten it any, any further, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna tie this just to make sure it's tight enough, and I'm going to hide that one just like I did the one at the bottom, okay? So I'm gonna put that through my needle, I'm going to go in through that space and I'm going to just come out. Go underneath the stuffing and out any area there. Cut that off. Lift that up. And there you have it. We've got the body completed, okay? For the most part, okay? That's the that's the beginning stages. Now we're going to do more to shape this. So stick with me, my friends. <laughs> um, I will be right back with you. Moving on to the next step. <laughs> okay, so... Rotate your, your piece and find what front you like the best. Like it should all be pretty pretty uniform, pretty much the same. But this, this dip here on my neck goes down a little bit lower um, in this area. So I'm going to use this as my front, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the middle of this body. It's, it's about there, okay? And I'm going to actually go to the back part. So if that if this is where I want it to be, then I'm going to just eyeball it. So it's right across. My camera low enough here. So it's right across, but on the opposite end in the back. And I'm going to take my needle and my that's got yarn on it, and I'm going to poke it right through that body. So you're going to need a fairly sharp one and a fairly long needle, right through that body until I get out to the front here. It can be a little challenging to do, but persevere. You'll get it. Okay, it poked up but it came in the wrong spot so there we go so now it poked through I'm gonna pull that through making sure that I have an end that's still on the back okay and bring that through and then I'm going to just go up one or two stitches well actually two bars can you see where the, I'll just show you here I'm gonna go up over top of two bars and into that um, second stitch so this is one and two and I'm gonna go right through to the back again and I'm gonna come out in that same space. Hope I'm in the camera here. This is very hard to do, there we go. Poking through. It's hard to get it through all those layers of stuffing, but if you persevere and you push, you can get it. Okay, there we go, got it. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my needle off. Um, but because there's so much stuffing between it, like we're going to tie this so that we can pull up on a little belly button. You can see it's already started. Um, generally, I would say put a put a you know a, a strand in between when you tie these. But because um, because we have such a tight, it's it's so tightly in there with the stuffing. It's not you don't you don't need to worry about doing that. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to tie a knot because your knot's going over top of the stuffing really. Okay, and there you go, just like that. And I've got my belly button. So we've made our stomach indent just like that it's so cute i love it okay so very easy to do um i mean a little difficult trying to get your yarn through but but um easy to make the the uh little belly button on the front and that really makes a difference in how your elephant looks okay so i'm going to take that in and i'm going to hide that just like so and i'm going to then do the same thing going to the front of my body again okay that's the middle I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to go across the head where the ears would be, okay? So you're going to take another piece of yarn. This helps to make the, to, to form the head so it's not quite so round. It'll be more like um, round, like round but pointy, and that's what we want. And our ears are going to cover this, this one so um, it doesn't, you know, it'll be okay. So you've got your belly button there. You're going to follow it up. This is going to be the front of your face. So now you're going to just go in the side there about midway up, okay? And go straight across and come out the other side. Okay, doing the same thing we did on the other one. This is looking all wonky because I've been 
putting pressure on it. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take one bar and go back down and come out there. See, this one's a little bit easier because you don't have quite as much stuffing to have to go through. It's a, it's a lesser. Um, it's not so far. Okay. And then I'm gonna pull this tight just like we did before. See how that's shaping my head and making it look less round? That's exactly what I want. So I pulled that quite tight. Now I'm going to tie a knot. I'm gonna do it twice. I'm gonna cut this off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hide this yarn again, okay? Now we're going to set this body part aside. We're going to set up our Addy again and we're going to we're going to make the ears, okay? So go ahead, move this out of the way, get your Addy. See, there you go. <laughs> it's looking great, okay? You're gonna get your Addy and we're gonna move on to the next part. To do the um, ears, we're going to do it basically the same way that we, we're gonna make the, the piece the same way that we made our first panel. So we're gonna bring our last white and our first black needle in line with our yarn feeder. We're going to put a tail into the middle. We're gonna do a long tail cast on behind that first block in front and behind all the way around, just as we did before. My machine's a bit squeaky. And then we're gonna open our feeder, put it in there. We're going to change our row counter to zero. And then for, th for our ears, we're gonna make two of these, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're going to knit 35 rows, okay? So you're just going to do a straight, straight circular knitting just like this, do 35 rows. And when you get um, your 30, 35 rows done, you're going to then cut off a long tail, open your yarn feeder, put it in between that last white and the first black needle, and you're going to do a long tail cast off just like what we did with the body, okay? And you're gonna do that for two different pieces. So long tail cast on, 35 rows, long tail cast off. And when you get that done, come back and see me. I have my two ears made and I'm going to stretch them out just like we do every other thing we take off our machine, okay? <clears throat> just like so. Then we're going to do the same thing <laughs> that we did to the body. We're going to pull that tight on one end. I'm gonna just cut this off so it's not quite so long. Okay, we're going to cinch up the end. Let me just add that. We're going to go around and we're going to tighten up the end, okay? And when we get this one done, we're going to do the same thing to the other side, just like what we did with the body, okay? All right, so I'm going to finish getting around the circle here. Then I'm gonna tie off a knot. One more little piece here, okay? Just like so. Pull that, tie a simple knot to secure. Okay, and then I'm going to poke that needle into the center, grab it with my hand so it's not going to, um, on the other side, so it's not going to uh, snag the sides. Then I'm gonna pinch the top there and I'm gonna bring it through. Now this is a smaller piece, so it's it's a, it's a little awkward, but you can do it. We're going to just um, let that yarn tail stay outside of this. Um, when we close this one up, we want this to be coming outside as well so we can tie them up together, okay? Just like we do. Well, um, with a bean ear like we did with the body part of our elephant, okay? So let's just tighten this up. I'm gonna cut that off again, okay? Make it a little bit, make it a little bit shorter, but not too short because we need a longer piece to sew up, okay? And so um, just rather, rather deal with it being long and getting in your way a little bit because we're going to have to do some, some work on this little ear to make it look like an ear and we'll need a longer piece, okay? So cinch that up, add it to your to your needle and go around and tighten that. And when you get that tightened, then um, tie these two together to make the, the both sides come really close together just like that, okay? And then when you get that done, come back and see me and we'll we'll shape the ear. All right, so I, I closed off the end, then I tied these two together so it's like a flat little pancake, okay, just like that. And you can already see what's gonna happen here. <laughs> See, it's like a flat little pancake. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to 
spread it out so that it's as um, flat as we can get it there. All right. Then we're going to take our our, need, our threaded um, needle here, the one that we just uh, used to tie off. Okay. And we're going to just pick a section and go in and out gathering. You might want to put a, a longer needle on if you want, but I'm going through all the layers and I'm just going up to the top. Okay. To gather. And then I'm going to bring it around and I'm going to come down the other side going through both layers until I get back to the middle. Okay. Back and forth, back and forth until I get there. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull on this. Okay. This one I want to pull on till it's pretty tight. Okay. So it comes almost down as far as you can pull it. And then I'm going to take this other end that was left there and I'm going to tie it. I'm going to tie a knot. Okay. Just like so. Then I'm going to go straight across, straight across to the other side. And I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm not going to pull it quite as tight. So you'll see just one second. Stay with me. <laughs> okay. And somehow this looks like an ear. I, I played around and did several different things thinking, how can I make this look like an ear? Um, and this is, this is the best way that I can come up with. You might, you might find a way that you think looks better, but, um, and go ahead by all means. Uh, but this is, uh, this is what I have come up with and I, I think it'll work. Well, it does work actually. So down through there and then to the last one, then up through that center peak. Okay. Then for this one, I'm going to pull that, but not quite as tight. So just, just loosely. I just want to lightly gather it. Okay. Then I'm going to tie off a knot here. Just like that. So this side was tightly ga gathered. The other side just slightly. And that's so that it brings my edge here shorter so that I can sew it onto the head. Okay. So now I'm going to hide this in between the layers. Cut it off. I'm going to do the same with the other one. I'm going to hide it between the layers and cut it off. Then I'm going to thread my needle with one more piece that's um, uh, about a foot long and, and I'll see you back. Okay. So go ahead, hide this end and then thread your needle with another piece. There's that little gadget of mine. That's what I'm needing. There we go. Lifesaver. Okay, so I have my needle threaded again. This is the side where we pulled it tight. So this is going to be um, the side that's away from my head. And this is the side I'm going to going to sew onto my head or onto the <laughs> elephant's head. I can sew it on my head too, but um, we're going to put it, this side on against the elephant's head. Um, but what we want to do first is we want to just grab, okay, here's, the, here's where the dip is. We're going to just grab right to the top of it. We're going to tie a knot to attach this yarn. Okay, just like so. And I will be hiding this end in, but I'll do that when I'm not with you. And then I'm going to just go about an inch over on the other side, and I'm going to gather that together just with a knot, just like so. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down, maybe I can count rows, one, two, three, four, five, about five or well, about, about that far. <laughs> okay, so you're going to just, here's your, your ear coming around and this is the middle of the bottom um, center part. You're going to go halfway between the side here and the bottom um, edge there or the, the middle there at the bottom. We're going to, we're going to go about halfway, but we're going to take our, our needle and we're going to zigzag up at the top here just till you get to that spot. Okay. And then again, go back. I just want to make this this um, bottom layer a little bit shorter so that uh, there's not so much to to add on to the to the side of the head. It's not so long, okay? And then I'm going to go ahead and join that again. So now I've just lessened this, and it also makes it so that this one is smaller than this top one, and that's that's another reason why I wanted to do that, okay? And then I'm going to just sew this up so that this there's not an opening there, okay? Just like so, okay? So now you can see this is the top of my ear. 
and this is the bottom part, okay? And now we've got this ridge here that we're going to um, sew onto our head, okay? So I've already sewed one floppy ear on, and uh, yeah, this is the front. So I'm going to now take this other ear, and we're gonna sew it on um, starting in that center. So this is where we gathered a little bit so that we could make this little, the bottom ear lobe smaller than this top one. This top one is, is quite a bit bigger, so as you can see. Okay, so you're gonna wanna make sure that, that this is the one that's at the bottom, that you don't have it flipped and, flipped and have the big part of the ear at, at the uh, bottom by the neck here. But um, So we're going to start in that middle section here and then where you, where you made that little um, indent there in the beginning when we sewed together, that's where we're gonna be our middle referencing point, okay? So this is the one that we gathered to make this lobe smaller. So we're going to start by attaching that. So I'm gonna go right into the middle of that little, right across into that little indent that we had. That'll be my middle point, okay? And I'm going to attach my ear, just like that. And then I'm gonna work my way up, going back and forth underneath my stitches and then picking up the edge of my, of my ear until I get it up to the top. And I'm gonna go up as far as about like that. So it's about an eighth of an inch from the, from the middle hole, just lining up, same as the first one. So there's just a very little space. So I'm going to go, sew up until I get to that part, okay? And then when I get finished sewing that up, I'm gonna attach another piece of yarn down in the center, center there and I'm going to sew down this part from the middle down to the neck until I get about an eighth of an inch from the neck too so very close to the neck but not exactly right to the neck okay so that's how I put my ears on so again we're gonna um we're going to straighten this out so we have the rim and we're going to just um okay so it's through the fabric there or through the head there I'm going to take a piece of the ridge there of the rim of the ear and I'm going to sew that on then I'm going to go back in to the head here and I'm going to pick up a stitch there or so. Then go back into the ear, grab that, and I'm going to sew it and then pull on this so it's tight. And I'm going to sew all along that ear until it comes up to where I want it to end, okay? Which is going to be right close to the top of the head, just like that. Again, then I'm going to reattach um, a yarn in the middle and I'm going to do the same thing with this side of the ear down to just close to the neck but not quite to the neck. Making sure again that the big part of the earlobe is at the top and the smaller part that we made is at the bottom. Okay so you go ahead and finish that and uh, when you're done um, I'll see you back. Okay so how did that go? Was it a challenge or did it go well for you? I hope it went well. Okay so as long as you've got both of the wider parts of the ear at the top Okay, and then the shorter side down at the bottom and you've got them in the center, it'll be perfect. Those big floppy Dumbo ears <laughs> are gonna be great. And if you get them on one way and you think, okay, well, should that be the front or should that be the back? You can turn it around and then just flip these the other way um, and then decide which way you think should be best, okay? Um, I, I think that, uh, that that's the back because there's a bigger, bigger area here, okay? So I'm gonna use this as the front and now I'm going to move on and we're going to start making our um, our arms, our legs, and our trunk. Okay, so grab your Addy 22 or your Centro 22 needle machine, get that all set up, and then we will begin the next part of our project. All right? We're going to start with the arms, and to do that, we're going to take our working yarn. We're going to do a long tail cast on, just like we did for the body and for the ears. <laughs> Behind the first block, in front of the next, all the way around. until it goes to in front of that last white, insert it into our yarn feeder, set our row counter to zero, and we are going to knit 25 rows, okay? Now when you're done knitting 25 rows, you're gonna do a long tail cast off. Um, I don't think I have to do that with you because we've done it a couple times already. So you're going to do your 25 rows, finish your 25th row, and then you're going to cut off um, a piece of yarn from the end here, and you're going to remove each stitch um, from all 22 needles and do a long tail cast off, okay? So 25 rows, long tail cast off. You are going to make two of those. And then once you have that done, um, we're going to come back and we're going to do a second part of the arm, okay? Using a contrasting color, I'll be using white. So once you get your 25 rows done, then you do a long tail cast off. I'm almost at 25 now. <laughs> and you do a long tail cast off, grab your second color, 
and then we will do the next little piece. All right, so I have my piece off the machine and there it is. I'm gonna give it a stretch both ways. Now we need another little piece for this arm and that's the little white end that uh, you see in the beginning picture. And we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna do a long tail cast on, okay? Um, in front and behind, all the way around. Okay, and then we are going to knit 14 rows. Okay, set your counter to zero and that knit 14 rows and then do a long tail cast off okay we're gonna make a little ball out of this to stuff into put into the end of the of the arm okay so go ahead and do that and when you get 14 rows then um do a long tail cast off and you're going to need to make two of each of these for the arms all right so go ahead and do that and then when you're done um, i'll show you how to assemble the arms Okay, even though this piece is small, we're going to still stretch it out in both directions, okay? Then we're going to cinch, just take one of the ends and cinch it closed and, and tighten it just like we've, we've done before. I already did it. And then you're going to tie it off in a knot. Then you're gonna put your needle through that center hole, grab it on the other end so it doesn't snag the sides. And you're gonna pinch the top here and you're gonna bring it through. Just like so. Now it looks really tiny, <laughs> but uh, it's the right and then you're, it's the right size. And then we're going to um, pull that tight, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put our needle on it. We're going to cinch close that end right there. Um, then we're going to tie this together to bring both hands up close together, just like we did for the other pieces. Um, and then from there, I will show you what to do next. Okay, so I'm going to keep that one. Um, strand still uh, on the needle and I'm going to cut this other one off okay just to make it shorter then um, we're going to we can turn that back the other way so that that one end is in the inside okay then we're going to take our piece and we're going to stretch it again now depending on how tight of a knitter you are if you're going to use a tight um, tension when you're knitting then you're going to want to do 27 or 28 rows for the arm um, I had it, I don't know if I mentioned it well in the beginning, in the video while I was doing this, but I had a fairly loose tension um, to do 25 rows, okay? And so now that I have that done, I'm going to just take this other piece that's uh, that's still on my hook and I'm going to travel it on up to that ridge, okay? Just to the to the brim, or the rim around the top there. I'm not going to pull it because I don't want to, I don't want to gather um, that row and I'm just going to tie it off just like this just so I have a beginning point, okay? And then we're going to go around and we're going to um, pick up some stitches, every other every other stitch or so, okay? Or you can pick up two and leave two, however you like, but I'm just gonna go around because we're going to gather this end closed as we stuff it, but it's not. we're not gonna close it completely because we're gonna put our little white circle in there, okay? So we're gonna just start it off like this, okay? until we get around to the beginning. And if you pull it a little bit, you'll you'll be able to see where your beginning is. So mine is right there, okay? So I'm gonna go around until I get to the beginning there. Just like so. It took me actually a few tries with this elephant to figure out how I wanted the arms to be. I, I, I made them much longer than, um, I made them a little bit sh longer than this. And then I, I thought, no, I still want them to look shorter and chubbier. So that's uh, how I came up with, with this, okay? This length, so you can, you can um, you know, change them to however you want them. If you want them a little bit longer, you go ahead. Um, but I wouldn't go much shorter, okay? And so we're gonna stuff that just like so, okay? Pulling up on these stitches as we do so. Just like that. Now we're gonna leave this like this, okay? And we're going to go on, move on to this little white piece. 
We are going to do the exact same thing with this little short little 14 row <laughs> um, piece. We're going to pull this and we're going to tighten it there, bring it through. We're going to tighten this other side um, and we're going to bring this end through to the other end just like we did this yellow one. But it's going to be a small version, smaller version of this. OK, um, so it's a little finicky to do because it's, you know, to bring this end into this other end. Um, but uh, but you'll manage. So first, what you're going to do is tighten it off. Then put this yarn through the center like we did with the other one, bring it out, and then we're going to tighten this off, and then we're going to stuff it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and come back just before I'm ready to stuff, okay? All right, so this little guy is, is almost done. So I, I um, tightened up that end, and I brought the yarn through. This is the yarn that's coming from that other end. Um, I'm going to tighten up this end, okay? But all I need to do, really, because this is so small, is uh, just tie a knot. And it will tighten up this end at the same time. See, just like that, okay? Didn't have to go around and reinforce that. Then I'm going to double knot that. I'm going to cut off one of these. I'm going to save the longest one because I need it for sewing. We're going to, actually, it doesn't matter. You don't need a whole lot. So we're going to cut that off. We're going to do the same thing we did with the, with the arm. We're going to put one strand back on our needle. We're going to smooth this out so that these, this is actually in the center and we're going to bring all these around. Okay. And smooth them out. And we're going to go up to the edge. Just like that. Don't pull it because we don't want to, uh, to change the shape of the circle. Okay. We're just going to make a little knot right at the top there. Now we can begin to weave in and out all around the rim. Okay, so go ahead and do that, and we're going to then stuff this little guy. Okay, and that's what we're going to put on the inside of, at the bottom of the arm. Okay, so keep going around, just like this, until you make it to the beginning. And then we're going to stuff it, okay? Okay, so I made it around, and I'm going to cinch this just a little bit. I'm going to grab some stuffing. We're going to... Put that in there. Now there doesn't seem like a whole lot of space because there isn't, but <laughs> when you tuck and you pull on this um, yarn end, then you'll begin to form a circle, okay? A little circle, just like that. I'm actually gonna put just a tiny bit more, not a lot, but a little bit goes a long way with a small little guy like this, okay? So I'm just gonna tuck in a little bit more there. Take my needle. And now I'm going to sew this closed. Get tucked right in there, you little guy. Okay. So now you can go around and you can sew it closed. And it doesn't matter if um, if you don't get it completely tight because this is going to be on the inside and you're not going to see it. Um, but we just want to reinforce it. Okay. So just like that, around the first row of stitches and pull and it'll begin to close. Okay. Just like that, and that's good enough. I'm gonna go underneath, bring it around. So, oops, lost it, so I can make a loop and I'm going to make a knot. Then I'm going to um, put my uh, needle back on, make another, knot, make another knot to reinforce it. Then I'm going to tuck this on in and underneath and hide it, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna grab the arm and I'm gonna put a little bit more stuffing in there because I want it to be fairly stuffed, fairly full, okay? And then I'm going to put that little ball. I'm going to choose which side it looks nicer. So that one we left a little bigger opening. So I'm going to put it in this way, okay? Just going to hold it there. You're going to take your threaded needle. And you're going to just pick up a row on the side there. And then go around. Okay? But you want to go fairly low on, on the little ball. So you'll see that I've got from the bottom there one to about three rows up. Because you want the majority of the of the ball to be showing, okay? So I'm just going to keep going around just like this, trying to keep it even, lifting up that little flap when I need to, getting in there, and sewing that little piece on, okay? So you're going to go ahead and do that all the way around until you get to the beginning. And when you get to the beginning, you're going to knot it off, hide your ends, 
and then we'll move on to the next part, okay? When you look at it here, it looks like a small little chubby thing, but um, it, it'll be better once we're done. So um, hang in there <laughs> and uh, keep going, and we'll finish it off in, in just a minute and attach it to the body, okay? All right. All right, so once you get it sewn on, it's going to look really chubby and... <laughs> That's what an elephant's arm is. It's chubby leg. Okay, but you're going to stretch it out a bit, just like that. So you're working those fibers so you make it a little bit longer. And see how that's wonderful. It's perfect, okay? Then you're going to, at the top here, now the reason why I didn't do, I didn't do a flat seam because then I would have had to, um, there would have been more sewing involved in it, but I also don't want, didn't want a long piece that's, that's straight across here. So I thought if I gather it here, like we did, then I can, from that point, make a little flat edge that's, um, that's not quite, that's not so long, but it's shorter. Okay. So we're going to add a piece of yarn here. I will, um, hide that ends later. And then we're just going to go across just like this. Okay. And then go underneath. We're just going to make a flat edge just that's very short there okay about an inch I would say get rid of this little piece that's hiding giving me some trouble there come on get out of there little one there we go okay just like that and then I'm going to do a couple more I'm gonna go under because that sort of gives it a helps it to to be squared off so to speak okay and we're going to do another one here and one more and then I'll, I'll show you a better view okay one more underneath there and then I've gone ahead and see we've made a flat edge that we can use to sew onto our um, elephant okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to I put one on for you let me raise my camera Okay, so I um, put one on for you already. So now that flat edge that we made will make it easier for you to sew it onto the um, front of your body here. So what I did is I took the one edge um, and I put it, there's about a one stitch uh, distance between where we're, where our ear was um, to where you're going to begin sewing on your arm right here. So there's this one row in between the ear and the corner of the arm. Okay, and then I just sewed it on. We're going to do that on the same side here. We're going to, or on the other side here, we're going to, um, there's one row here, this one row that runs alongside where this seam is here. So I'm just going to go over just a little bit there. I'm going to pick up where the neck is. Then I'm going to come over top and go through. And then I'm going to pull that. And then I'm going to pick up another stitch. like so I'm gonna go over top of that little seam that we created and through down to the back and I'm gonna sew it on all along like that along the front okay and then tie it off um, and uh, knot it and hide your ends and we've got our arms on we still got to do our embellishment on the little hands here but uh, we've got those two done so let's um, finish putting that on and then then we will move on to the next part all right, so we're going to move on to the legs, okay? And we're going to take our working yarn. We're going to do a long tail cast on, just like we did with the uh, arms, okay? Back and forth, front and back. It's got to be in front of that last white into your yarn feeder. Set your row counter to zero. And we did 25 rows for the arms. We're going to do 35 rows for the legs, okay? So... You're going to do the exact same thing that we did for the arms, except for rather than doing 25 rows, you're going to do 35 rows. Um, and then you're going to go ahead and you're going to make two of these little balls again, the same way we did um, with the arms, 14 rows. Um, make those into little, into little balls like that. Okay, and we're going to sew up the legs the exact same way that we did the arms. Okay, so 35 rows and then 14 rows for that little white ball. And... Uh, Assemble them just like you did for the arms and then we'll put them onto our, our um, elephant. Okay, so go ahead and do that and then I'll see you back. 
All right, so our elephant is looking super cute um, and taking really good shape here. So this is the one um, leg that I did the same way as we did the um, smaller ones up on the top here. Um, but what I did is I'm going to attach it to the bottom, okay? So you're just gonna line it up. This is this is where my, my arm is. If I follow it down, um, okay, how could, the middle of the arm is where the far end of the leg here begins, okay? So, and maybe just a little bit in, but you just eyeball it. Um, it's hard for me to tell you where to exactly place it. So that just gives you a bit of an idea. Um, and so then you can sit your elephant up um, because we're going to put it on the bottom, just like I'm going to just tip this upside down here, um, move my camera over just a tiny wee bit here. Hopefully that helps, okay? So this is our middle point on the, on the bottom of our, um, elephant we're going to take our um our leg and we're going to just hold it like that okay and then we're going to sew it on just like we um basically how we've been doing all along with the other pieces okay and so i'm going to i'm going to use my left hand here because i want to come up from the front and come to the back okay and attach that like so and I'm going to just angle it the same way I've got this one angled. So it's just a, it's just an eyeball game, really. <laughs> you want to look and see what you're what you've done on the other side. And and uh, once you place the first one in and you like how it's sitting, um, then you just do a mirror image of the other one. Okay. So that's what I'm doing here. And so I'm going to come up. I'm not very good with my left hand. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, always wished I was a ambidextrous, but. Uh, Okay, so we're gonna go there. And then we're gonna come up and we're gonna continue sewing that till it's on. And then I'm gonna do another um, another row of, of seaming. So do what I've just showed you coming up um, on this ridge, sewing this ridge on that we um, created um, earlier. And then um, get, get it on that way. And then we're gonna do one more row of seams. So once I get my first row done here, I'll show you where what I mean by that, okay? Okay, so I've got it sewn on and I hope that you can see this uh, well enough in this in this camera. But what I want to do is I want to um, I want to sew up farther on the leg up a little bit farther here. Now that we got our initial seam in, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab a little higher up here again, doing it with my left hand just so you can you can see better. OK, and then I'm going to grab up higher here. That's going to help my leg to stay in a in a semi sitting position okay which is what i'm aiming for i'm going to go like that but it also helps it not it just helps it to attach it you know it looks better when it's attached and it's not going to um just be all floppy okay and uh and pulling so it just reinforces it so then back up to here hey i'm not doing too bad with my left hand <laughs> oh, the things you learn to do okay and then I'm going to just continue that across this, this row here, just attaching it a bit higher until I get to the end and then I'm going to knot it off. Simply that that's all we're doing. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make the trunk and for the trunk, we're going to need to use waste yarn. So I'm going to, my, my white yarn is here. So I'm just going to use my white yarn. And we're going to cast on a long tail cast on with our waste yarn. So a different color from your project yarn, one that you can easily see the stitches after. Okay. Um, see the stitches of your working yarn. So we're going to, for me, I'm going to just do eight rows. Okay. Five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. So that's one row of waste yarn, then I'm, or eight rows of waste yarn. I'm going to cut that tail, open the yarn feeder. I'm going to put that tail in between my first white, last white and my first black, and then I'm going to grab my working yarn, okay? I'm going to put that into the center, okay, and into my yarn feeder. I'm going to set my counter to zero, and I'm going to do 30, I'm going to just give this one little tie, 30 rows of working yarn, okay? And when I get my 30 rows done, I'm going to do a long tail cast on, cast off, okay? So I'm not going to um, stay on here and do that with you because we've done that already um, for several pieces. So I'm not needed to, to do it for this one. So go ahead and 
knit your 30 rows and then do a long tail cast off and then I'll see you back, okay? All right, so when that's done, your piece will look like this and then you're gonna stretch it widthwise and lengthwise to get all those stitches in, in their place, okay? And to soften it up and then you're going to close up this end. Okay, just like what we've been doing. Cinch it up and, and uh, finish it off, okay? So I'm going to go around the circle here, the top row of stitches, and I'm gonna close this end. Okay, and then tie it off with a knot to reinforce it and uh, hide the end, and then we'll move on to the other side, okay? I hope you're enjoying this project. There seems to be, like there's a lot of, of little steps to it, but, but a lot of repetition too, so, um, yeah, that repetition makes it makes it more more known and it makes it easier. Um, the first couple you you work through a little bit slower, but then the next ones um, are a little bit easier. So um, I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. Okay. Okay, I'm going to cut that off. Then. What we're going to do is we're going to take our crochet hook and we're going to flat seam close this one, okay? So undo that little knot of your waist yarn and your um, working yarn. Grab your two little stitch markers. I've got my little bobby pins here and we're going to place those, okay? So in the when you trail back this, this um, waist yarn here, it's coming out of this stitch here. So you're going to put your bobby pin in there. Then you're going to go to the left of it where you see um, these two right here and you're going to take the top one, okay? Then, because we know this is 22 needles, we're going to count around to our 11th and 12th stitch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this is 12. So these two are my two very, the stitches that are on the very opposite side, okay? So I'm going to take, count this one as one, and I'm going to take this next one and put it through the loop on the hook. That's two. Then I'm going to go down to this next stitch. That's three. Put it through the loop on my hook. Go up to this next row, grab that top one, put it through the loop on my hook, go down to that next stitch, grab it, through the loop on my hook, up to the top, and you're gonna do that all the way across, making sure that you work all 22 stitches, okay? Counting, num the first one was the one that you had on your hook, okay? Number 12, when we counted around, okay? You're gonna pick up all of these stitches, and close your end with a flat seam, okay? This is a 3.5 millimeter hook. Um, you can use whatever hook feels comfortable in your hand. Generally, I'm using a 4.5 for this, this work, but this one was, was close, so I grabbed it, and it really doesn't matter, okay? Okay, so now that I'm at the end, I'm gonna pull up, this is, this is stitch 21, I'm gonna pull it up so that I can uh, get under that stitch, put it through the loop on my hook, then 22. These last couple can get tight and hard to find, so that's why it's great if you use a stitch marker, okay? So I'm gonna put that one underneath, pull that marker out, finish off that stitch, then I'm going to yarn over, pull it through that loop to tighten it, and there we go, okay? Now I'm going to remove this waist yarn, so I'm going to roll up that edge. You see where your um, tail is coming out, you're gonna find you're going to find that very top row. You're going to pinch the stitch, that loop that goes over that very top row. You're going to pinch that on the left and pull it from the right, okay? Go down four or five stitches, roll it all the way up, pinch that stitch, and pull that top row. We just do this until the first row is, is loosened, okay? There we go, almost there. One more. And then the rest just unravels, just like this, okay? So you can go ahead and remove your waist yarn. I need to attach another piece of yarn because we uh, need to use this for sewing, but this one's too, too short. So I'm gonna hide this one and attach a new one. I'm also going to need, um, a yarn attached to this side too. So I think I actually have one on my needle. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. I'm gonna start down here. I'm going to um, just go into where that little, 
stitch is, the very center there. And I'm going to tie, tie this yarn onto here so I can use it to sew, okay? So I'm gonna tie a knot. I'm gonna just leave this, this in there because you're not gonna see it, I'm gonna hide it. We're going to start sewing up our side, okay? So I'm going to take it so that I find the, um, a row where the wide part of the V-stitch, here you go, you see? I don't know if you can see that. The wide part of the V-stitch is going to the left, is up, okay? And I'm gonna find that same kind of, of a row on this side, okay? About, yeah, when you when you fold it where the natural fold is, just go to where, where both of your stitches. Now I have the wide part of the V here and the wide part on both sides. So this one and this one, okay? But I'm gonna start down here I always like to put a little knot in there, okay? Then I'm going to begin the mattress stitch going up, okay? So I'm gonna pick up two bars. Where's my, that row of stitches? It's hard to see at first because um it's tiny in here, okay? So it, it, the stitches are so small down in the, in the end here. But you follow it down until you get it. And I'm gonna pick up two of the stitches on that side. And I'm going to follow this all the way up with the mattress stitch, okay? Picking up two bars, just like that. Going across to the other side, and where I came out, see it's coming out there, I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to pick up two stitches. I'm going to, it's coming out here, so I'm going to go in there, pick up two bars. And I'm going to do that all the way to, up till I get to the top, okay? I'm going to get a few more stitches done, then I will pull it tight. Just like so. Okay, so now I'm gonna pinch it down here and I'm gonna pull this. See how that pulls it together beautifully? There we go, that's what I want. Then I'm gonna keep going, doing this mattress stitch or the invisible stitch, however you wanna call it, until I get up to the top. So you keep going and when you get to the top, I'll meet you there. Pulling every once in a while, of course, just to, to um, close it up. All right, I have it closed up. And you know, um, this next step you can do two ways. You can do it the way I'm going to do it now, or you can, you could have done it as you sewed it up. Um, but I, I find that then the fiber feel gets in the way and stuff. So I like to do it this way. But um, because we're going to add these pipe cleaners, I've got four pipe cleaners, I'm going to bend them in half, just like that. Then I'm going to twist that end with all the with all the sharp edges and then just bend it down, okay? Bend it down within itself, okay? And and uh, take care of the sharpness of it. Then I'm going to fold it into, fold it into some stuffing just like that. Wind it around, just like so. Then you're gonna stick it into the trunk. Okay, just like so. Again, see, if you wanna do it before, as you're sewing it up, you can go ahead, but I, I actually, I find that this works. You just gotta stick your finger in there and you gotta take it down just like that. Then you can pull this up. And then you get that all stuffed in there, just like so. Because I wanna make sure that that pipe cleaner is completely, is completely encased. Okay. There we go. I'm going to bring that up. And I've got that in there, just like that. It was very, very easy to do, okay? And then um, then I play with it here. <laughs> I just love it. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit more fiber fill. And I'm going to push it down in there with my finger. It's very, very easy to push it down once it's sewn. Um, so don't worry about that. Then you're not worrying, about, then you're not trying to sew around the fiber fill that's poking out of your stitches. So that's why I prefer to do it this way, okay? And those sharp little ends of that pipe cleaner are all nice and covered. So now I'm gonna go to this other side and I'm gonna fill that in as well just all around where I feel I need to fill it in so it's nice and firm, okay? So you go ahead and do that. And um, as you're doing that, you're going to want to make sure that this end part is not as full as the rest of it, okay? You want it to get 
to to be narrower down here and then to bench and to get wider as you go up just almost about like how I'm doing it here I'm going to add a little bit more in here so it's a little bit wider up at the from the middle up I wish I had better angles for you but hopefully that works okay <laughs> so I'm going to position the trunk in the middle of the face just like so okay um and it's sticking out like a carrot but we're going to <laughs> we're going to bend it with the pipe cleaner when we've got it sewn on and so i'm going to take my needle and i'm going to just sew it all along the edge just like what we were doing with the other pieces okay i'm um, just catching the edge of, of the pro of the piece um to the stitches that are are we're um, securing it to okay so go ahead and sew that on and when you get that on <laughs> we'll continue oh i just love it it's so cute <laughs> Okay, so I have the nose on. There you go. <laughs> and it looks fantastic. So then I bent this part down, the tip down, and then in half up. And then it sits nice, just like that, okay? <laughs> so now all we have to do is the embellishments on uh, the tips of the arms and the legs and the, and the eyes. So let's do that next. Actually, there's a couple more things that we're going to do, but um, to start with, we're going to do the little um, embellishments here on, on, the, on the legs, all four legs. I've called these arms <laughs> all the way through this video, but really they're all four legs, right? Um, but my elephant has two arms and two legs, so however you want to look at it. But <laughs> anyways, before we get into that, some of you might be thinking, why did you put a little ball in there instead of doing um, a color change and then... Um, cinching it off with with a string and that's a very good question um, <laughs> that I know some of you are thinking um, and the reason why is because I think that this for me personally I believe that this adds, adds a little bit more dimension so um, it's just not a flat piece that that you can tell that it's not a flat piece that was cinched um, you can you can see that there is a it, it does look like it's a separate um, piece to a certain extent and that's really what I wanted when I designed this little elephant so um, that, that's the reason why I did it that way. But if you want to do a solid color, then do white and then a solid color of, of your main color again and put it in half and then cinch that off. By all means, go ahead and do it. But if you want to follow the pattern the way I've designed it, um, the little ball is, is a nice little addition in there, I think. Okay, so now for these little um, areas here that we're going to do, I've done it on, on both of the top ones and on one of the bottom ones. Now I'm just going to show you how I do it and we're going to do it on the bottom. I'm going to just uh, lower my camera for you. All right, so to do this, all I do is I'm going to thread my, my needle with my yarn. I'm going to come up on the side here and through the middle, through that little hole down in the middle there, okay? And I'm going to pull this through. If I can get it through, this needle's a little too small, but it's the sharpest one that I have right now. Oh, mercy. None of them have been this hard. Come on, there we go. Do you know, I find I am using a bag, that bag of fiber fill. Um, as a put, I have the uh, one bag left and I've got the big box to use. But if you want my personal opinion on the differences between the two, I will not buy a bag again. I like the box stuff. I like the texture of it better. It is different. It's not the same. The texture of the one in the bag, you can hardly get a needle through. Even if I use my sharpest needles, um, to get it through the fiber fill is very, very hard. But the stuff within the box, I think is a little bit softer and it goes through a lot easier. So um, I do prefer it. So just, uh, you know, just my little two cents on, on the difference between the bag and the big box. Okay. So anyways, we've come up through that center stitch there. We're going to go over to the side here. And we're going to go up as far as you want to go up you'll have to you'll have to really judge it yourself but I've gone up about two stitches okay you've got one line there I'm gonna go in right beside it come back down into that little point into the center there and pull it and I'm gonna use my thumb to make sure that 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 stitch goes right beside the first one not on top but beside okay and then I'm gonna do that one more time I'm going to go right beside it and come back down into that center, okay? So right beside it and back down into that center and come out, okay? Oh my goodness, I'm telling you, this is my the fourth one that I've done and none of them have been this difficult. Um, 
but I think this this one feels a lot firmer. I think I've packed this one a little bit more firmer than I did any of the other ones, but that's okay. I will win this war. I always do. Okay, so then we're going to go, we're going to leave a space, okay? We're going to go up and we're going to do the same thing. Three bars coming down through the center. Either that or it's because I'm, I'm doing it at a funny angle. Let's, let's go with that. Okay. So I'm going to come back down and up through the center. That absolutely has, has a lot to do with it actually. And then I'm going to go back down right beside it at the top of that, like right beside the top of that stitch in through the middle circle there. and pull it out line that up right beside it maybe I'm too close to the camera now one second okay then I'm going to do a third one right beside it and then up through that center hole right there again because when I go when I go beside it it makes it wider at the top and I come down into that center point every time it makes it look like a little triangle and that's what I'm what's that's what I'm trying to get okay so that's three there and I'm going to do that three to, so I've got three rows all connecting down into the point and I'm going to do it for four different one two three four four different um, sections okay and there's four on that one there's four on that one and we're going to put four on this one okay so you go ahead and do that to all of the ends of the of the limbs and then we will um we'll move on to the next part okay all righty because there are a few more things we're going to um we're going to make a little tail for the back we're going to um put the eyes on we're going to put a little tuft of hair at the top and which is very quick and very easy and we're going to um do one adjustment to our trunk okay and then we will be done. Now, if you want to add a little thing around the neck um, to yours and, and embellish it farther, um, for sure, go ahead and do that. If you're visualizing something um, that I'm not doing, add it. Um, make it your own. And uh, be sure to show us on the Facebook group, on Qualinits and Knacks Facebook group, because I would love to see it. And so would the rest of uh, our friends on that channel, so, um, or in that group, Facebook group. So. Um, please be sure to, to show us. And, and, uh, I look at that every day, all day, <laughs> not every day, all day, but I do look at it a lot. Um, and, uh, and I try to respond to every video, um, that's on there. So there we go. There's four. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into that center. And out where I went in over here. Okay? Just like so. And I'm going to go off camera to pull this through because I know it's really tight and I'm not going to get it um, without moving it closer to my body. So I'm going to go and pull that through and then I'll see you right back. <laughs> okay, that took a little bit of muscle power, but I got it. And I'm going to tie a knot there. Then I'm going to find a different needle. One that might be a little bit bigger. Not quite as sharp though. And I'm going to take one at a time and I'm going to just bury it, okay? Into the, um, into the project, just like we always do. All right, so let me get that around there. I'm going to go into that same space that it's coming out of and then go up, push it through. And when I do the second one, it pulls the knot in, then I lift it up and I cut it and you can't even see it, okay? Because then I, I take my needle and I lift up the, the strands there. So go ahead and do that, hide your ends, and I'll see you back. So I decided that I was going to um, reinforce my nose and uh, or the trunk here. And I did it all while I was on camera. And then I realized once I, once I went back to um, check the video that I was completely off camera. So um, I won't show you, I won't re-, re rip this out and show you again but all I did was let's say that this was how the trunk was I went down just a little bit from here and then went up a little bit higher here and I just sewed around 
in a semicircle just for the very top of the nose just so that this this was falling like this but by doing that it just made it um, straighter so pretend that that um, that this is how it was okay again I just went in here under both um, strands and I, I went down about an eighth of an inch on the nose and then I sewed it up about an eighth, eighth of an inch on the head and then went back down about an eighth of an inch and then up an eighth of an inch and what that did was that it raised this a little bit and, and secured it so um, I've got to hide that that uh, strand yet but that's what I did there and then for where we have our bend here where we bent it with the um, come on elephant sit there where we bent it with the pipe cleaner I reinforced that too so I just took my needle and my thread or my yarn and I went down under here well actually I went over to the side here I, I did three stitches I went down under two stitches here then up here then down here up here down there and up there about an eighth of an inch and that's just going to reinforce that bend then I took my my yarn and I trailed it down to the point here of the of the trunk okay so I trailed it I'm going to just stand and make sure I'm in the camera here I trailed it down to the trunk here and what I'm going to do there is is I'm going to just take it across the pipe cleaner does work, but I want to, um, it gives it some some um, movement, of course, but I want to just reinforce it. So I'm going to take that. This is a short thread. I'm running out of, out of uh, length here. Then I'm going to just tip that down and just um, reinforce it underneath. Just like that, just so, so you can see the bend in it just a little bit better. Okay. And all I have to do is do that twice and, and it's good. So this is my second time and down just to give it a, a little help with the, with the looks of the bend. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So then I'm going to knot this off and then I'm going to go ahead and I'll just do it here. Knot it off. Just like so. And I'm going to do it one more time and then I'm going to hide this down through the strands. Okay. So go ahead and do that and then um, see me back. All right, this elephant is looking pretty amazing. I'm loving him. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to, we're almost done. We're just doing some embellishment, some fine tuning. We're going to take a little piece of, of yarn, nothing big, like I think this is probably three inches. Okay, um, and we're going to thread the needle. Okay, then we're going to, in between where um, the ears are, we're going to grab a tuft there a stitch we're going to pull that through so it's in half like that we're going to tie a knot okay just like that and then you're going to take the end of your the point of your needle and you're going to shred this okay you're just going to unloosen this the fibers and get it all fuzzy okay you're going to do that with both of these <laughs> oh that's so cute okay so you're going to get them all shredded like that okay pulling off those little knots if it gets a little knot you just pull it off and then you're going to you're going to take another one and you're going to do the same thing just in about a semicircle here okay so one in the middle there you can put one on either side of it if you like and a few just in the front here not many you need about five or six that's about it um, so you follow suit, you do the same thing. And then once we get them all shredded, we're going to trim them. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to just pick up some a strand here. I might not even need five or six. Um, just as many as it takes to for you to think that it looks nice. Okay, you just want a little tuft. Okay, so tie a knot. You don't have to measure these out before you put them on um, because you're going to cut them. And you're going to untwist the fibers all the way down, starting at the point and going down, just like so, on both sides. And you're going to repeat the process until you get a few of them on there, okay? And once I get uh, my mount on that I want, then I'll come back and I'll show you how I cut them, okay? It's like... You don't need to see but i'll show you anyways <laughs> okay so there we go i'm going to get a few more on and then i'll come back and i'll see you all right so i put six of them on there i'm going to just now pick them up like that 
and I'm going to trim them off. Take that out of there. Oops, let's cut that off. And fluff them out. I think the shorter, like, not too short, but I think shorter is better than long because he just wants a little tuft. <laughs> I love it. It's so cute. <laughs> so we've got that done. Now we're going to do the eyes. Okay. So we're going to layer our little elephant down and we're going to get, I'm going to use my gray yarn. So I'm going to get some gray yarn and put it on my needle and I'll see you right back. All right, so I have my needle and I have my I have it threaded. I'm going to come up through the side here and I'm going to go. My nose is here um, or the trunk is here. I'm going to go just slightly off to the side. Um, if the side is here, I'm about I'm one row over. OK, and then I'm going to come up through that stitch and I'm going to go straight up two stitches in height. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to do that again. That's the second time. And you're going to do that until you like the width of it. I'm going to go again, bringing that down. I think it needs another one. That's four. And I'm going to do another one on this. Just over here. Okay, so I did five. Okay, just like that. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Okay, then um, rather than coming up here, I should have gone straight down. I'm going to go under back into that hole, but underneath the fiber. But pay attention to, to your lineup, okay, because you want to go underneath the, the fiber fill so that you don't um, so that you don't see the gray. But I want, I want to have it the same distance from this side of the nose as it is from this side and straight across. So I think that looks about right. So I'm going to, oops, I'm going to try my hand at that. Okay. So up two stitches. And I went five times. One. Oop, right around my big ears here. One. Sorry, I was out of the camera again. Two. I'm going to keep it consistent with the other one. So three. Four. And one more. Five. Now, I'm going to come up here just because I want to assess what it looks like, but I, I'm not going to stay there because there's uh, another part that I want to do, but I'm going to hold this up so I can see what it looks like. Uh, for some reason, the left one doesn't look at... Oh, there we go. Okay, so now that I have those those eyes the way I want, okay, I don't want to do a six strand, so I'm going to put that back into the hole that it came out of, and I'm going to go up to the top corner of that eye, okay? Just like so. And then from there, I'm just going to go up a little bit, come down. I think that's a, a row and a half, or a stitch and a half, and then I'm going to go one more, just a little bit down and then I'm going to come straight across to the corner of of this other eye underneath the stuffing into the corner of this eye and do the same thing okay just like that okay so now let me turn this so you can see so I'm going to go up just a little bit and then back down into that same spot And then one more, just a little over and a little lower. And this time when I put it in, I'm going to come back out over here where I went in from the very start, okay? But first I'm going to take a look at that. Oh, 
I love it. <laughs> okay, so there you go. So now I'm going to cut this off so that I can work better with it. I'm going to give this a tie and I'm going to hide it just like we've always done with every other with every other um, tail. Okay, maybe with this big knee. Nope, I'm going to just do one at a time. Okay, so go ahead and hide that. And my friends, all we have left is the tail. Are you excited? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all we have left is the tail and you know what I have run out of yarn this up to this point took a full ball of yarn um, and I was scrounging for pieces in my garbage sometime when I had to <laughs> when I had to add a tail onto onto um, an ear or something that wasn't uh, long enough for sewing um, but I do not have enough to make the tail so I'm going to make it in um, in a different color to show you um, so that I can so that we can move on with this project and then when I go to the city um, sometime this week I will get another ball of this yellow there we go oh, so cute I will get another ball of this um, baby yellow and uh, and I will I will change it out okay but I'm going to make it in gray just so that you can see what we're going to do okay so that's the last part that we need to do if you want to grab your Addy 22 and uh, see me back all right, so to make our tail, um, we're gonna use just a very small flat panel, okay? Um, and we're going to just cinch it at both ends. But for to make a flat panel, we're gonna keep it in circular mode and we're going to use our middle black needle as our middle, um, middle, middle row of our panel. We're gonna do seven needles. So if this is, if we're doing seven, then this middle black one would be counted as the fourth stitch, right? So um, we'll need three on each side of this needle. So one two three so this will be the first needle that we work we need two needles for turning needles okay um for a flat panel but we'll, we'll put our stopper on so if this is if this is the first needle that i'm going to to work i'm going to look at the red divider that's right next to it here and i'm going to count one two three and i'm going to put my stopper on that one okay these two are the turning needles this one and this one this is my first knitted needle, two, three, this is the middle one, four, five, six, this is the last one we're going to knit. So we need these two as turning needles, but because this juts out, I've got to put this um, five dividers over rather than three, because um, we need to have room for this uh, little piece here, okay? So let's go back. This is a turning needle, that's a turning needle, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Now I'm going to look at the divider to the left of that and count that as one, two, three, four, five. And on this fifth divider, I'm going to put my other stopper. Now that will, that will keep my machine from, um, once it, once it hits that, once this little bar hits that, then I know I'm to turn back and go this way. And so once this part hits that black one, then I know I'm going to turn back and go that way. And I'm going to keep going back and forth. Okay. But let's start at the beginning here. And let's get our yarn and we're going to um, attach it. All right, so we've got our stoppers on and we know that this is a turning needle, this is a turning needle, and this is our first needle. We're gonna do a long tail cast on. So put your long tail into the middle. You're going to go behind that first needle. Remember, we're casting onto seven needles. Uh, so behind and in front, behind and in front. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now you've got to go underneath that red divider that's to the left of your of your last needle that you're knitting, okay? So this is our seventh. We've got to go under that red divider. Then we've got to keep going till the stopper stops us, okay? Now it's stopping me. I can't go any further. So I'm going to, on, on the tail that's um, coming out of the back of this, um, you can't see it on the camera, but out of the back of the yarn feeder, I'm going to put some tension on it. And then you're going to as you put a little bit of tension till it goes over top of that red divider. This is our seventh needle, okay? So it's gotta go over that divider. That needle's gonna catch it, pop down, and then we're gonna keep going, okay? You can let go a little bit of the tension then. Okay, this is our first needle. So we're going to go, make sure that needle catches it. We're going to keep going till our stopper catches it, okay? Until that pop down underneath that needle. Okay, it's got to pop down underneath the, the, sorry, the divider past the first needle. So then, then when we turn and go back, 
it's going to pop down over that red needle again or red divider sorry <laughs> that red divider so then we're going to keep going okay you're going to make always make sure that those loops are over the red teeth this is my seventh needle we're going to knit it and then we're going to keep going till we get to the stopper because when we get to the stopper this will have dropped down under there okay that's why we have to go that far we have to make sure that that pops down see dropped down as i got to the stopper then i'm going to put some tension on my back my back needle or my back uh, yarn that's being fed through the feeder and you'll see it's got to go over that divider and under the needle and through the loop and then we keep going Okay, so I'm going to push that one down over those red needles. Then I'm going to keep going. This is my first needle. These are the two turning needles. It's going to stop at the stopper, but it once it once it goes over this um, red divider, it'll pop down, and then the stopper will stop me, and I'm ready to turn the other way. Okay, so then I'm going to go back the other way. This is the fourth row. Okay. And then we're going to go back. This is the fifth row. Down over those red teeth. Going back. Oh, see, this is my first needle. This has to be underneath there, underneath that divider. Okay, so I'm going to back up just a little bit, make sure those teeth are there. Okay, so now it's going to go over the divider, catch that first stitch, and it's going to go back. Okay. And we're going to keep going for 15 rows. I forgot to set my counter, um, but we did our cast on row and then going back was one, then two, three, four. And now this will be row five. I think, let me count one, two, three, four, five, six. This will be row seven going back and we're going to do 15 rows. Okay. So it's going to pop down over that divider that's to the left of the last needle. There we go. Make sure that that first one is over the red teeth and it's going to pop down over that red divider before the stopper stops me. See, just there. And then I'm going to keep going back. Okay, so keep going till you get 15 rows done and then I'll see you back, okay? All right, so that was fun. <laughs> We're going to take a cut a long tail off we're going to wrap make sure that's wrapped around that first um actually this is these are the two turning needles so we're going to turn back and get it get that yarn out from behind those two turning needles and then we're going to do a long tail cast off okay so we're gonna thread our needle we're gonna crank our handle until it drops down below that stitch and then we can take it off okay we're going to take off all seven seven stitches just the same way that's three four five six and seven okay so once you get that released from your from your machine you can remove your addy and then um come back and we will we will go from there and i'll show you what to do next okay so here's our little piece. We're going to stretch it. Then we're going to go to the one end and we're going to pull this. Okay, just to cinch it just like that. We're going to go to the other end. We're going to do the exact same thing. Pull it and cinch it. And I am not even going to bother sewing that up. I mean, you can if you want, um, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to take my, my little elephant here. And then right on the bum there, all I'm going to do is sew that on just like that. I'm going to tuck this in. I'm going to like it, tuck it in through the side there. Then I'm going to take this one and not just underneath where that little button is. You're going to, you're going to sew that on and you've got your little, just with your needle and thread in and out. And then you've got your little tail. <laughs> okay. Elephants don't have big tail, long tails. They just have, they just have little ones like this. So we're going to sew that on, but I'm not going to sew it on because I don't want it to be white. I'm going to get um, some more baby yellow yarn. I have to get another ball just for a 15 row <laughs> tail, but I'll use it. I'll, I'll, I'll use it again. So that's not a problem. But anyway, so that's what you're going to do. And when you're done sewing that on, you have completed your 
project and you should be very proud of yourself this guy is so absolutely adorable you can't see him well because because the um camera is low but when i when i was doing the eyes i thought that the left one was a little bit lower because it doesn't follow the trail of the um of the stitch line here and so to me it looked like it was off but that's because the way my my neck is tightened and the way these are all tightened um if I was to follow that same stitch line, then they would be off centered, but they're they're perfectly centered and they look great. Um, so anyways, um, I think we're done. So once you get your tail on, you can put an embellishment around the neck if you choose to. Um, I'm gonna just leave it, but uh, you're welcome to do that and embellish them however you want. Um, so, all right. all right, my friends, we're done. <laughs> Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it and that you make many more. Um, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that very, very much. Um, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and join us over on my Facebook group, Koala Knits and Knacks. Um, I'll put the link in, in the description below. So thanks again for joining me. I hope you have a great day.